welcome. Today I want to show you how I did this acrylic, oil pastel and charcoal mixed media drawing painting today. Uh, I've done, I'm working on a piece of watercolour paper here, Fabriano watercolour paper, it's 12 inches square um, and I do suggest that you work smaller for this kind of work, um, particularly to begin with maybe while you're getting a feel for it because you'll learn what the materials do to each other, they interact in different ways. Um, according to how you apply them um, but also it means that you can finish your piece of work in one sitting you can carry the idea through uh, from start to finish uh, all in one go which can help you keep a kind of clarity of vision as you work anyway I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you later okay so I'm going to start off by sketching in some of the broader shapes in this landscape I've got the photo there that I'm looking at but I've also got this drawing that I did on the spot and I really want this to be my main inspiration I find sometimes that photographs can be a little bit inhibiting and daunting so I'm going to work mainly from the drawing but with the photograph as a prompt for the tones obviously this is a line drawing so it'll be interesting to have the tones uh, reference the tonal reference in the photograph on the, the screen there so it's very little sky in this landscape. There's a hill beyond the pond. So this is a series of bands really uh, going across this surface. This is a piece of 12 by 12 Fabriano watercolour paper, which I've primed with the pale umber acrylic paint that I use to prime everything that I work on really. It's a nice warm sort of grey and makes a good mid-tone and good surface to work oh good surface to work on as well. A very thin piece of willow charcoal but it's giving me some nice lines. Uh, so just putting in the broad shapes these are all trees up here and there's a path going through there and the big important part of this was these gorgeous spiky bulrushes that were in the grass, in the ice, sorry. Kind of coming up through the ice on the pond here. And I just thought they made wonderful textures. So that's giving me my initial sketch to work with. I'm going to put some paint on and then have a look at it and see what we've got. I've got some water here. Whoops. Move those. I've also got a cloth <clears throat> because although I want the paint to run a little bit, I want to control the wetness of this brush. So I dip it in the water and then dab it on an old cloth. And that way I know I'm not going to end up with my work running with water. Acrylics are far better, the drier the you, you use them the better because they lose, oh it's a rather poor brush, let's try again. I want a big brush really, uh, that's a good one. Yeah so acrylics are better if you try to keep the water out of them really. It's okay for that initial sketch when you're first laying things down but then after that use a medium to thin your acrylics because it will keep their plastic quality if you use a medium or use pure paint because uh, the water makes them dull, they dry very dull and lose some of their vibrancy then. So that is, that sky colour comes in a little bit down here, it's not really a blue sky, I can alter that as I go, kind of greyish. I'm mixing ultramarine blue with the burnt umber here and I can put that in for the shadowy part here the bank is a lovely the bank is causing a dark reflection on the water here but there's also a lovely edge that I caught in my sketch here too there's an edge to that bank a dark textured edge so this isn't a snowy landscape but it was certainly icy and frozen. It all becomes very magical uh, when the weather has affected the landscape in this way. 
um, I did a sketch video a few days ago and um, talked about how the mist seems to edit the landscape that I'm going to hold the brush the other way. I'm holding it from the top now to get a different kind of mark. This sort of misty, wintry weather um, kind of softens everything and blurs the details that you see in the landscape. This is my palette, by the way. So I've got that sort of sky blue, but now I'm darkening it. I'm trying to make a kind of more neutral brown, uh, grey for these distant trees. These are right at the back, so they don't need to be too dark. I'm going to see if I can keep that tone varied, soft, I mean, sort of not too dark. And I'm mixing brown and blue again with on top of that grey, so it's, it's not so dark. And I'm also, if you don't mix the paint thoroughly, i show you that on the end of the brush, it means that you get varied colour in the marks that you make, which can be quite useful for this kind of, that's well, quite useful for all painting really, but it, it's good for these trees because obviously they're made up of many different textures and depths and layers. So that slightly unmixed grey, browny, bluey mix coming off the brush in different places is giving me you know, a lovely modulated area of the painting there. Um, now coming forwards a little bit, I'm going to put some of the Burnt Sienna, which is my version of red in this palette. Uh, it's a lovely earthy kind of red. I didn't want anything too bright for this winter landscape. So I'm going to put that in down here. Now having this pastel, not pastel, having the charcoal on the drawing, which is kind of dusty, it's blending with the paint a little bit. The paint is disturbing it and picking up the black. So where I've put more charcoal, I'm getting darker tones here, which is really what I want. It's really useful. If you don't want that to happen, if you want your charcoal just to remain kind of linear and uh, charcoal-y, visible, uh, you can spray it with fixative or hairspray before you start doing that. And that will help hold it down a bit. It's not 100%, but it will do a job and I'm going to put some yellow ochre in for this foreground for these grasses in the foreground yellow ochre and uh, burnt umber mix there yellow ochre is still quite a bright colour so I'm trying to just darken it a little bit and again using the brush in a variety of ways to try and get varied marks we have a habit just as we do with our handwriting really, it's very much like handwriting our brush marks, of making, automatically making certain marks without even thinking about it. It's like our hand just moves in that way, particularly this kind of a crossways mark that comes so naturally to us. And if you can twist your brush around, hold it in a different way, push it and use the side of it and try and vary your marks, you'll end up with a much richer more interesting paint surface and it kind of opens up all sorts of possibilities for your painting then too. Kind of accidental interesting things to happen. I'm working on Fabriano watercolour paper that I've primed with the pale umber acrylic paint and um, what that does, the paper is really strong, it's a very heavy paper and so that makes it good for working hard. I can really sort of, you know, press on this surface and not worry about it ruckling, you know, getting ridges in it or wearing the surface away either. It's, you know, it's a good sturdy sort of paper. But also it's got a texture because watercolour paper that hasn't been hot pressed has a, a good texture. And um, which works really well with these kind of marks. As you'll see, I'll do a close up of this at the end of the video, but um, it just really works well with the acrylic paint. Uh, and also priming it with the gesso, not the gesso, sorry, priming it with the acrylic paint or gesso would work too, seals the surface of the paper so it's not sucking the water out of my paint the whole time. There's some of this colour back here, but not very much. 
a little bit of light on the landscape. Um, yeah, so the, the pale umber acrylic is sealing the paper so the paint will slide over it a little bit. If you don't do that, all the moisture immediately gets drawn into the surface of the paper and then your paint dries out too quickly and you find it hard to work. But this way, it does resist it a little bit, just allows it to sit on the surface a little bit more easily. So I'm just going across ways a little bit. Obviously there's a lot less texture in that background area than in the foreground. And it is still quite dark too. I've got the photograph there, but I'm trying not to be too influenced by it because what's important is the painting that you turn out, not its resemblance to a photograph. Because you may as well just put the photograph on your wall. Um, you're making a painting and that's what's important with this. So I'm just looking at the areas of light and dark and texture. So that now that pale umber is creating the colour of the ice really. It's a really good colour and a good tone for the ice on the surface of the pond. So for this area it's sort of shadow really but it's sort of shadow and, and a reflection of the the hill beyond i'm using vertical marks whenever you're doing water or ice there's always a, a mixture a combination of vertical elements you've got the verticalness of the that's a word of the reflections and shadows being cast from what's beyond the water coming down but then you also get the and I'm going to use a little bit of the slow drying medium here because I want it to slide across a bit you get the horizontal plane of the water or the ice working um, as well it's a combination of the two so you see the vertical and the horizontal kind of, it, it, there's an interplay of the two really. Um, the slow drying medium, you don't want to put too much in because you can end up with the, the paint not really drying properly, it can go rather gluey, but it is thinning the paint slightly too and giving me a little bit of transparency which is quite nice too. So I want to get some more of the, there's some lovely cloudy reflections here Probably a bit blue, Let's soften that. You can see I'm sort of moving my attention around the painting, I'm not worrying too much about one area before I move on to the next. Um, so constantly I'm able to assess the relationship of one area of the painting with another. And while I'm doing this, obviously that area is drying um, for when I want to return to it. Acrylics dry really quickly. Um, and you can see that as a bonus or a problem, but depending what kind of painter you are, maybe. I find that allows me, what I like about acrylics in particular, the, the, that quick drying time allows me to build up layers with the colours, and I think that makes them more subtle. Um, because I don't paint in a flat way, I like to create sort of subtlety and richness as I paint, and that layering element of the acrylics allows that to happen in a different way to oils. I like them both in different ways for different reasons. Uh, there's a little bit of light there. So the whole thing with the photograph and I think what drew my eye when I was in the landscape uh, was that the sun is here above the hill um, creating these very bright shadows coming down. Um, it's a view called contre jour, it means against the sun or against the light. Uh, and it just always makes it dramatic. I'm just 
put touches in on the ice, sort of catching the ridges in the ice here. And what I'm hoping the, the oil pastels will do is enhance the textures in this because it is such a textured scene. So although I've, I've got a little bit of uh, charcoal showing, some lovely little flecks of light down here as well, but it that is going to work with it too, but this, I'm hoping the oil pastels will also be create a nice contrast with some of these more softer painted marks. I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to that light for the sun. So I've just added a little bit of the yellow ochre to that. Um, put it in up here too and some pure white up here. Right. I'm mixing now yellow ochre and French ultramarine because there's a kind of mid-tone here that's really quite Interesting. Perhaps not as blue as that. It's like a very pale grey, but it does here. It's um, very descriptive of the iciness of that pond. It's really interesting to check the painting in the camera on the phone and you can do this as you're working as well you know have a look at it on your phone screen because it will often flag up either problems or in fact show you you know the work from distances if you're looking at it from across the room and then you can see faults or see the overall effect of what you're creating so what do I need to do next I need to start I think I need to build up that a little bit more in the background, but I don't want to do too much. And then I'll start getting these textures in in the foreground. Just get a different sort of brush and just see if I can make this look a little bit more substantial with more paint. So I'm going to create a warm-ish mix using yellow ochre, burnt sienna here and uh, French ultramarine just to keep it slightly cool because we want it to sit back. Oh, that's nice. And again, holding the brush very loosely, you know, in a, in a bicycle handle kind of way from the top rather than in a pen grip like this, which makes a much more limited range of marks. You might need to do that for details towards the end of the painting. But if you can spend a lot of the painting in this way, painting in this way, It'll keep it nice and lively and varied. Sort of sketchy way of working maybe, but I do like to be able to see the brushworks in a painting. Uh, and go dark a bit down towards the water. So I'm using the browns you know, the sort of yellow ochre and the, get some of that in the water too, and the burnt umber here. Just build up those reflections a bit. There is a tree on this side which I can put in with the, just a small bush here that I can put in with the oil pastels hopefully. darken this. If you get the darks dark enough the light should show much more strongly in your painting. That brightness is only there, only that bright because of the contrast with the darks around it. 
like in here under these trees. Oops. But the darkest points need to be in the foreground overall to bring that forward. So I'm just going to warm some of the treetops at the back here because it's rather nice. The light is catching them and bringing out those winter tree colours over here. There's a little bit of it here too. So that's um, using burnt sienna. I'm going to put some burnt sienna and blue in. Oops, a bit dark. So we light that a little bit. So just mixing burnt sienna and blue there. You have a conversation with your painting when you work like this. So you, you do something, you see how it looks and then you do something else and kind of react to what's there. Um, it's such an interesting thing to do. Okay, so um, I'm going to now get the oil pastels out and see what we can do with those. So I've got a kind of mixture of oil pastel colours here. I want to get something like, um, that's a sort of red, let's try that. These are sort of dry, weedy things in the foreground here. It's quite nice. And dark brown will be good for these grasses. So they stand out then in front of the water. So I'm going to do the bulrushes with a black oil pastel. Try it anyway, I don't want it to be too strong. That should be okay. So the oil pastels sit really nicely on top of the acrylic paint, probably helped by the fact that I've used a textured paper too. Uh, the paint is quite dry. I haven't put so much on that it's gone very plastic and, uh, hello Dudley, um, shiny. You know, there's plenty here for the oil pastels to stick to. And obviously the ball rushes have these. Oh, oops. <laughs> Just getting into his chair. I can emphasize the tops of the ball rushes a bit. And they kind of thin out over this side. Oh, they're beautiful. I did a drawing of these when they were in full leaf last summer. And they were dramatic then too, but when they're dry and pared down like this, they're also rather beautiful sticking up through the ice. So checking with my drawing here. There's some lovely kind of vertical marks here where the the stalk of the bulrush becomes the reflection in the ice. It really did look like a drawing, as if nature had made a drawing in the ice. quite dark against the light here. There's some foreground stuff here too. Some little twiggy things sticking up through the ice, little bits of dry grass. And then that bush here. I'll try that in dark brown. Uh, wherever that's gone. Here we are.
That's quite nice because that makes a visual connection from one area of the painting into another. And this brown, it's like a really like a burnt umber colour, has this warm reddish quality, so that's coming forwards a bit. It doesn't look sort of stuck on, I think a black might make it look a bit yeah, in your face. Uh, so that's quite good. I'm going to put also um, some light oil pastel in the foreground because I love how you can layer oil pastels up. Um, if I can find the right colour, something like that. It's a kind of peachy, slightly like yellow ochre, Naples yellow really, I suppose, in the foreground. They're just catching, the grasses are catching the light. gives you a contrasting mark to the the softness of the paint and the obviously paint is a flat mark generally a you know, swathe of color this is linear so you get this nice relationship between the two with this kind of technique this mixed media technique I think I might like a bit of blue in there too just to go with that kind of cold feel in the ice there's a crack almost across, I don't know what it is, like a change in the, almost like it froze mid-ripple across the middle of the pond here, creating a shadow. That's rather nice in blue. There's a few more bits like that too. So the colours I'm using in the pastels are kind of working in a similar way. I'm using blue and then earth colours in the pastels, oil pastels. Uh, so that they'll work with the acrylics well. Obviously at different times of year you use a different palette really. If this was a springtime painting I'd have lemon yellow and um, you know, much brighter greens in the landscape. I just want to work on this bit of light here. I've still got the acrylics here. Um, which are drying, they've dried a little bit, the colours I made earlier, but the blobs of paint are still useful. So I can put this on just to kind of soften the edges of that white a little bit. Just felt a bit like that was a bit harsh. And now I want to put that down, um, just use some finer marks. I've got this nice Egbert filbert from um, Rosemary & Co. that has a lovely clean edge and I'm going to put some white sparkle in this foreground water here. Actually what I'll do first before I do that is put some more of the sky bluey grey reflection here because the sparkle won't work if you don't have something for it to contrast with. You need some depth of colour. It doesn't have to be really dark but you certainly need some slightly darker tones for the sparkle to work with. So I'm going to put some of that in here. And I'm just scuffing it across because it's the icy texture is a kind of it's not glossy like water obviously it's slightly softer okay so try that and then we'll put the white on so just pure titanium white here I'm using the filbert brush in a little sideways motion i'm going to put that there too and obviously that's got to correspond with where the light is above it, so that they relate to each other. So that's working quite well, I think. And then that comes all down here too, and little frozen ripples here. A 
biggest marks seem to be around this sort of central area here. And then I can just mix it a little bit, just soften it a little bit. So it's still very pale, but with a little bit of the, um, this is French ultramarine with a little bit of yellow ochre and a bit more white, just to take the edge off the white and use it in some of these other areas too. It's not quite so strong over here, but it is still reflecting the sky. And there's a slight warmth around here to the warmth of the sun almost coming from there. And then I could put the rushes, full rushes back in, put those brushes in there to keep them moist, keep them wet, sorry. Uh, Just let those stand out again where I've lost them slightly. Let that texture do its work. This combination of oil pastel and watercolour paper and acrylic makes these amazing rich textures when you're drawing. looking at my sketch there you can see so much more in the sketch in some ways just these lovely vertical marks wriggling up and down caused by these rushes <laughs> all right Dudley Dudley keeping guard Oh, don't get too regular. There's always a danger of having things too regularly paced. Nature isn't quite like that. I think our brains like to kind of tidy things up and create rhythms when we're drawing. But obviously these weren't lined up like soldiers. They were very randomly placed. So that's how I'm going to try and do them. And just a little bit of that there too, just to darken that in the foreground. So I think all this needs now is a little bit more depth in the foreground. Uh, I might try that with a bit of a bit more paint and some drawing. So make up a darker tone. I'm using the ultramarine and the burnt umber. And just this all forwards a little bit a little bit stronger and darker a slight greenish quality to some of it so get some of the yellow ochre in and that'll tip it into a rich green grasses are kind of led down here and bring it right down off the edge of the painting too so it doesn't look like it's been truncated or something That's better. So that's bringing some depth and richness into the foreground. And I'll just put some lighter paint highlights on there too with the yellow ochre and titanium white. It's sort of going over the oil pastels really well because they're not there's not that much on there there's plenty for the paint to stick to uh 
if the oil pastels were more, more solid and the paint was more runny then the oil pastels would make a resist and the paint would run off the oil pastels and that can give you a whole range of interesting effects then too. You can scratch into this too which is quite nice, put a thumbnail on there. And I'll go back in with that pale Naples yellow type pastel, to, oil pastel, I should say, to there. I think I'm going to stop there because I think that's done. Okay, so here you can see close up what I did with the oil pastel here on top of the acrylic paint and those little acrylic dabs of white to create the sparkle on the water there. These are the foreground grasses, a mixture of oil pastel and acrylic there. Um, and the other marks and textures across the painting. I hope you found that helpful and please join me again. If you click the subscribe button, you'll see all the videos that I put on in the future and I've got loads more ideas of things to show you. And tap the like button too, because that helps as well. Hope to see you again. Bye bye.